Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it is Sunday. A little interesting stuff. First up, former Goldman Sachs exec says Bitcoin ETF will be approved, bringing billions, not millions, billions into the crypto market and why I've been hearing this same song and dance for the last six plus years also. VeChain to supply blockchain tech for a Chinese food safety group that includes McDonald's. And the real question is, is this a real press release? Also, we're gonna go over Q of the day where I'm gonna to talk to you about a poll that I just put out yesterday, which asked the question, if you had quarter of a million dollars in a nano ledger, would you be okay with throwing it away and reinstalling it from your passphrase? And we'll get into all that, but first let's go over what's going on in the market. So today, again, September 20th, 12 p.m. Texas time, high noon, let's see what's happening. Bitcoin almost at 11,000 yet again but it slipped 1.4 and here we are at almost 10.8. Ethereum down to 372. And there's something going on with Ethereum over at crypto.com app. This is what people are, have been sending me all morning. Looks like Ethereum is hitting a high of $79,519.23. So um, I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm guessing it's a glitch, just a guess. But if it is that much, uh, I will see everybody later and uh, my channel is done. No, I'm just kidding. Even if I if it was there, I'd still be doing videos. But uh, probably just a glitch, but we'll see what happens and uh, see what who gets wrecked out of this whole situation. So who knows? Moving down. So Tether market cap 15 billion, but uh, still at a dollar because it's a stable coin. What are you going to do? That's how it works. XRP also a stable coin at 24 cents. I'm just kidding. It's not a stable coin, but it has really been there for like ever. Polkadot down four, down almost 10% for the week. Ouchie, uh, down at 467. Bitcoin Cash, 225. And we just did a podcast or a uh, YouTube video with Alex Masioli and a whole cast of characters this morning, one of being uh, Roger Veer, Danish Ray from a new exchange, which I'm gonna get him on the program. It looks fascinating. And John Nanjarian and Ryan. And we just went over a bunch of different things. One of those was the Bitcoin Cash hard fork definitely coming up in November and how it's gonna affect everybody. So I'll put a link uh, in the description about when that video gets dropped. It was pretty interesting to me. Anyhow, but that could be the reason why there's a little bit of a bump and bumble with Bitcoin Cash. Binance Coin down 4%. Chainlink, uh, yeah, broke beyond the $10 barrier. Hoping that would stay, but guess not. Crypto.com up 3.6%, even though <laughs> hey, Ethereum's crazy high. And let's see what else we got. Anything fantastic Oh. Where is the darling of the crypto world? There it is, Uniswap. $5.11 after hitting, I think, a high of around $7.40, $7.50. So uh, Uniswap, I got to tell you, I tip my hat to you for the way you did things and the way you were uh, feasting or giving things out to the community. I appreciate that. If you don't know, Uniswap uh, was giving away 400 tokens to everybody who's ever used Uniswap, and that's 60% of the tokens going to the community. So uh, amazing. And that's how you build a community like Ray says, and uh, couldn't be happier about that. So that's what's going on. Let's jump into today's top stories. So first up, Goldman Sachs' X says Bitcoin ETF will be approved. I don't know how many years I've heard this. When I said six plus years, that's not true. Uh, I've been in here since 2017. So, so uh, yeah, about four years, I've heard the same thing all the time. But also, I did a quick video. It was called uh, uh, Message from 2012 where it had Roger Veer on there talking about Bitcoin and how there was going to be an ETF maybe next year. So that's where I kind of got that. I've been hearing this, this same thing forever and it just never happens. However, we have never had the kind of railway that we have or the infrastructure that we have built right now. The people that are already in the space, the Paul Tudor Jones, the Fidelity, the TD Ameritrades, uh, MicroStrategy, uh, Data Analytics just dropping half a billion dollars uh, in Bitcoin and all the different things as far as like institutional investors. And this is what Alex Mascioli always tells me. He's like, look, man, everybody's asking for Bitcoin and that's just how it's going to be. That's all the big institutional investors. And he should know because that's all he does over there at uh, Bitquant. He just loads up on institutional investors and brings them in, explains how to do things. So uh, I trust that guy. And I, Raul Pal is the one that, that we're talking about here. And uh, my friend Jerry, Jerry, if you don't know, he runs a, a pretty nice little YouTube channel and a um, uh, podcast. And he had he had Raul Powell on and they got into the whole thing about the ETA or the ETF. And this is what he says. He says, you're allowed to front run in Bitcoin. And I'm going to give you the biggest front running opportunity of your life, which is they will get an ETF across the line. All right. There will be billions of dollars that pours into it. And I believe that if it does get happening, there will be a ton of money. He says every pension plan will allocate some money to it. 
Every family office will allocate some money, and the more the prices go up, the more they will allocate because the larger the market cap of Bitcoin is, the bigger everything else is. So I agree with Raul Powell definitely that if they get an ETF and then just makes easier for institutions and pensions and all the different things that are out there as far as traditional finance, they can get into it. However, the thing is you have to get that ETF approved and the way that the SEC and everybody else uh, works it, words it, uh, it'll never happen. So it's either some of the top people have to get gone or somebody like Hester Pierce, who is a huge cryptocurrency advocate, she needs to step up and become the head of the SEC. That's the only way I, I see it. I think it's an old boys club and they don't understand exactly how far cryptocurrency digital assets are gonna go and how it's going to pretty much swallow the whole field. So again, I can definitely, it, it will be fantastic if this actually happens, but I've been hearing it for years, so uh, we'll see. But uh, Jerry, I will check out that video today and uh, you know, good job getting Raul Paul in there to, to squeeze the life information out of him. So great job. And uh, let's move on to the next section. Next up, I love reporting on VeChain because it makes some people's heads explode. Uh, but this one talks about VeChain to supply blockchain tech for Chinese food safety group that includes McDonald's. According to a Thursday Medium blog post, VeChain joins the 130 Strong member group as its only public blockchain technology provider and will further provide technical and infrastructural support for member firms. Firms, CAFA is a government-backed organization that falls within the Ministry of Agriculture. So why is this big? So CAFA intends to build a farm-to-table traceability system across China that would record the various stages of the food supply process on the blockchain. Why is that important? The reason why it's important is because not too long ago, this has been going on for years. This is one of the earliest ones I found. In April 2004, at least 13 babies in uh, Fuyang and Hai, I probably butchered that, and 50 to 60 more in rural areas of Anhui died of malnourishment from ingesting fake powdered milk. And that's just one example. So if you are the Ministry of Agriculture and you're trying to figure out how do I make sure that more people don't die because of all these greedy people out there that are screwing over other people and it's leading to fatalities, well, the best thing I could do is probably get on the blockchain. And who can we get to do blockchain? Well, there's this place called VeChain. It's in Singapore. And it does a lot of things with tracking and traceability and making sure that frauds aren't, uh, are, aren't going through. And they can do a lot of different things and they have it all set up on their own platform. And uh, it's pretty much like um, traceability in a box. So I don't see why they wouldn't do this. However, on the flip side to that, this was a Medium blog post. And just so you know, the blog post was written by the VeChain Foundation. And VeChain, from what I understand, a lot of people say that they are... They make up these uh, different uh, partnerships and they just straight up lie and they're just a bunch of filthy liars and blah, blah, blah. Well, so what I did, I went to the China Animal Health and Food Safety Alliance, CAFA.org, and I translated it all by hand. No, I'm just kidding. Google did all that for me. And what I tried to do was, was look at the news and look at what is going on. Well, Lex, let me tell you something, that they haven't updated this since August 14, 2020, so I don't have an official report. And of course, everybody's like, ah, see, I told you, they're just a bunch of filthy liars. Yeah, I mean, sure, there is no hardcore proof, but I will say this, from now on, every type of thing that I get through here, I'm definitely going to double check because I just don't see an organization being that brazen just to outright lie and lie a hundred different times about all the different uh, partnerships. Maybe here and there, uh, there might be like a little bit of, oh, I thought we were going to partnership. Oh, it's just that you're gonna use our product, but it's not a concrete thing. There's different levels of what people would consider a partnership. Sure, I get it. However, if anybody's having any information on this, I would like to see some hard evidence either way, because that would be fantastic. So put that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from it. And uh, let's break into the next top story. Actually, next top story is me. And uh, it all came down to this nice little poll that I put out on Twitter, where I said, hey, if you had a quarter million dollars, uh, could you throw away your ledger and restore it from your passphrase? It's a simple question, simple question with a complex answer. And uh, I wanna go over that in detail, so let's jump in the office. All right, everybody, welcome back to the office. It's a beautiful Sunday uh, here in El Paso, Texas. And this is uh, our segment called Q of the Day. And this is actually not so much a Q. Uh, we'll be doing more of these, what's our statements. And uh, I had put out a poll on Twitter. And the question was, if you had a quarter of a million dollars on your nano ledger, how confident would you be to just throw it away 
and restore it on a new ledger with your passphrase or mnemonic phrase. And the reason why I brought this up is because I was trying to uh, explain uh, cryptocurrency digital asset to uh, a person that had no idea what I was talking about. So, of course, you know, I use the uh, Bitcoin elevator pitch where I talked about, you know, Bitcoin is digital gold. Um, just like gold, it is scarce, but it's even more scarce than 21 million. Uh, you can send it to anybody, to anywhere in the world uh, for relatively no price, and uh, you can do it under 30 minutes. So try doing that with gold. It's, it's the best performing asset class of all time. It used to cost uh, $5 or a nickel, and now it costs uh, almost $11,000. And it's why I'm heavily invested into it. And it's why a bunch of huge companies are getting into it right now, because it is a hedge against the constant printing of the government. So that was my little Bitcoin elevator pitch. And uh, one of the things that uh, they were asking me was like, well, how do I store it? And I talked about the nano ledger, and they said, well, what if I lose a nano ledger? And I said, look, this nano ledger, which I held up right here, and I said, I will break this in half right now, and I will throw it in the trash, and I have no problems with that whatsoever. Try doing that with a bar of gold or with any kind of fiat money. It just does not happen. And uh, I could do it right now. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a big thing because I have my mnemonic phrase. And uh, uh, this guy, Eric, he's like, that's insane. That doesn't make any sense. So, uh, you know, we went into the whole thing, but I thought to myself, well, if that's an issue for somebody who's new, how about some people who are not new, like myself or like people out there in the Twitterverse or just like you watching this video? Because I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I just transferred, not, not just like a couple weeks ago, uh, between 25 and 30% of my entire portfolio over to uh, my Celsius wallet. And the reason I did that is because I believe in the project, I believe how great it is, I believe in Alex Shinsky, I talked about this a number of times, I don't wanna go over it again. But uh, I totally believe in it. Now the problem was, when I did it, I was sweating bullets, because I'm like, that's a lot of money, uh, you know, transferring back and forth. Now I knew in my mind, I'm like, well, it'll be okay, because I have my passphrase. But there's always something in your head that's like, you know, maybe it's not gonna work. So. I put out that, uh, that uh, uh, poll and the results I got back. And it was about 300 or so people, 318 votes. And about a quarter said, this is no problem. 28% said, I have no problems with that. Even if it's 250,000, I'll get it back, no big deal. Uh, I think half those people are liars. No, I'm just kidding. I, I do think a certain percentage, like if, if you're like, hey, break this ledger in half and throw in the trash, and it's a quarter of a million of your money, would they be like, yeah, no problem, Psh, click, off you go. I mean, a good amount probably, but I think some, maybe not. And the next, next close one was uh, 30%. It says, I'd be a little nervous. And then uh, the last one, which took the bulk, uh, was I'd be sweating bullets at 34%. And then there, the last one was, nope, not even gonna try it. That was 8%. So the vast majority, what I'm seeing, is either they have a little nervousness, a little apprehension to doing it, and some are just like, I'm not doing that. Which is weird because like that's the whole beauty of the of uh, cryptocurrency digital assets is the you know to store them on a cold wallet where they are completely safe and all you need is that that passphrase. So if even me like I'm a little bit nervous as I as I move things around and I'm nervous to actually if you know if Eric would have called me on my bluff said okay we'll we'll break your ledger let me see it I would have double checked my passphrase that's all I'll say. So I thought. There has to be a way that we can all go in there and double check our passphrase. And thankfully, there is a uh, quick download that you can use in Ledger Live um, where you can check your passphrase to double check to make sure it works. So if you do lose it, then you can bring it all back. So I'm gonna show you uh, exactly how to do that. And that is the first problem. First problem is you know just being able to restore it. The second I, problem I, I see is transferring and spending. So. We have to get used to that at some point because when the bull run comes, you know, it's going to be a little bit uh, difficult just to do these little tiny transactions here and there. We have to get used to it. So um, to transfer, of course, you can transfer it anywhere you want to. I'm sure you have another wallet. Transfer some of the wallet. I'm not saying to transfer everything like I did, like 30% of your portfolio, but just get used to it and it should, should be okay. Uh, the next thing I would recommend, this is just me being me, is uh, donate. Donate some Bitcoin to one of your charities. I'm going to show you a fantastic uh, website which lists a ton of charities that takes cryptocurrency, and I've double checked it uh, for for the uh, validity of it. And uh, one of those is Water for Uganda. So if you you know just want to get used to actually spending it, and you want to spend you know throw five dollars or ten dollars to any of these um, charities, hey, 
so much the better, right? So let's start with the first part. Let's go back, let's go into um, Ledger Live and let's take a look at that app and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we have back to back. I have my Ledger Live app open and just to be clear, Ledger Live is the app that allows you to see how much cryptocurrency and digital assets you have contained in your Nano Ledger uh, cold storage device. So this is just, Ledger Live is just the app that allows you to see that. And just to be crystal clear, uh, don't download Ledger Live anywhere besides the official uh, ledger.com website. Uh, don't go to Google, don't go to some other crazy websites like this is the Ledger and uh, just get it from the official website. That'll save you a lot of heartache and you won't lose all your money. So uh, this right here is from Ledger Support and uh, there's three steps for to install the recovery check. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the manager in Ledger Live, which uh, we are in Ledger Live. Let's open the manager, which is on the left-hand corner right above Buy Crypto. It says manager. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to unlock our device. So my device is hard connected to uh, my MacBook Pro uh, by, a, by a cord. Uh, some of the different ledgers, they, don't, they are uh, connected by Bluetooth, but mine is old school. So I'm going to enter in my special PIN code and it's going to load. And here we are. So we are in manager. Here's the app catalog. Here's all the apps installed. So we're going to go to the catalog. And we're going to type in recovery check. And there it is. Recovery check version 1.0. I do only 32 kilobytes, which is great because I've only got 40 kilobytes free. And that's the difference between a Nano S and an X. X has a lot more. S just has a limited amount. But hey, I don't need that much. So here we are. And besides, um, I have a couple of these. Actually, I got five of these. And uh, they're great. So I recommend not putting everything on one ledger uh, because if you lose it, what a bummer that would be. Or if you lose your recovery phrase, that would be a, that would suck. So you know, space it all out. It should be okay. All right, so we're going to install this. And we are done. So now we're going to move on to start the recovery check. Connect and unlock your device. Done that. Navigate to recovery check. And it's going to look something like this. And we're going to open that up. Both buttons to start the recovery check. Sure. And it's going to say check your recovery phrase. We're going to double click. And on the device, on the actual Ledger Live, it may say connect and unlock your device, but it's already unlocked, so it doesn't matter. This will just keep going, going, going. So I'm doing everything on my Nano Ledger right now. And it's going to ask you two things. Actually, three things, excuse me. It's going to ask you, do you have a recovery phrase with 12 words? Do you have a recovery phrase with 18 words? Or do you have a recovery phrase with 24 words? Now, obviously, the more uh, words you have, the more uh, secure it is, but for mine, I actually have a 24 word phrase because uh, it's the most uh, secure and why not, right? I got, uh, I got time. And I have written my recovery phrase down in two places. One is this Shield Folio Stone Book. If you haven't got one of these, they're fantastic. Um, should have a link somewhere in the description or just look for um, shieldfolio.com, stone book cryptocurrency. And it's pretty cool because uh, it's uh, smear resistant, it's water resistant, it's not fire resistant, uh, but you can write everything in there and, and stays for quite a long time. Also, uh, you can also write in uh, invisible ink and use a blue light underneath to actually uh, show your words. So that's kind of like James Bondish cool stuff. So yeah, not too bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my nano ledger and I'm going to enter all these words in just like it says here under step two, uh, number four and five. So let me do that right now. And just to note, you don't have to spell out the whole word. If you give it like the first two or three letters, it'll just give you like a little uh, Rolodex of different words that it could be and you pick the right one. So it doesn't take too long, although it does take a long time. And then I'll go off to word number two and three and so on until I get 24. I'll be right back. And when you're done, it'll say processing. And I'll go through the whole rigmarole, see if we did that right. And I gotta tell you, it took me about, uh, about seven minutes or so. And it's gonna say, the most beautiful word, words. Hey, guess what? Recovery matches, check mark, baby. And uh, that's it. So um, we have double checked, and that is the recovery phrase that actually works. So I highly recommend you to do that just to make sure everything is good. And just like it says here, number five, recovery phrase matches displayed if you've correctly saved recovery phrase. Number six, use the manager to uninstall the app. And the only reason is because, not for safety, but uh, the app is particularly big. And there's no use in keeping it on your device uh, once your recovery phrase has been checked, so I'll just do that later. Actually, I'll do that right now. And if you do get an incorrect recovery phrase, uh, follow these steps. 
Ensure you didn't run recovery check with a pass phrase enabled. Make sure the correct recovery phrase length is selected. Uh, that's why we went from 12, 18, and 24. Enter all the words. Verify the order of the words. Enter the device matches the order written on your recovery sheet. And check all the words in your recovery phrase are on the BIP39 word list. So you can take a look at that. It's all the different words that are uh, acceptable, which you should have written them down correctly. But, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a difference between like a word like uh, apple, sapple, snapple. I don't know. So uh, just make sure that on the word list and then they kind of help you jog your memory if you're like, hold on, I wrote down Snapple and it's really Apple. So there you go. So uh, let's uh, delete this, shall we? Log back in and there we are. So what do we got? Apps that are installed. We got this recovery check. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to uninstall that. And then there you go. I got a whopping uh, 100, and, well, no, I got 40 kilobytes free, which I got to tell you, you would think that, uh, I mean, there are thumb drives out there that it's like two gigabytes that are about the size of this thing, and it can only hold how much? 156 kilobytes. Wow, that sucks. Maybe they can work on that. Who knows? I mean, they got the X out there if you want to get that. Also, if you're looking for an Anna Ledger, uh, I think they're having like a 20% discount. Not, uh, I'm not, do not quote me. They have sales all the time. I always forget because they always tell me, Rob, make sure you mention your videos. Make sure you mention, I always forget. So just look in the description in my videos. Uh, there'll be a link to Nano Ledger. It's under the essentials. And just go pick one up or three or like me and get five uh, because I'm nervous. <laughs> and that's the big thing. Okay, so that's it. So I don't know which way you want to go. If uh, you would just want to transfer things back and forth to a wallet or if you want to give to a charity, uh, you'll always feel good when you donate to a charity. I don't know. Uh, it's just people helping people. So that's up to you, whatever you want to do. I'm not here to, uh, you know, make anybody do anything, but uh, I'd appreciate it if you did. So that's it. Uh, let's jump back to a uh, regular video. Okay, that's it. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you're looking for any type of uh, uh, alternative to Coinbase, if you're new to the space, Coinbase is great for, uh, you know, just getting your feet wet, but sometimes those fees are a little bit high, not as high as Uniswaps, <laughs> but uh, there's other options out there for you. And if you've listened to my channel for a length of time, you know that when the bull run hits, you have to be prepared because the last time the bull run hit, uh, Coinbase shut down for new uh, people to get in. Same thing as Binance and same thing as other different exchanges. So you must get as many exchanges on board for your on and off ramp. So if you look in the description, uh, there is a link to this spreadsheet, looks like this. And from there, it breaks down all the different wallets and exchanges and uh, decentralized finance out of things that I have used. I personally have a one-two punch, Voyager and Celsius. Voyager is very easy to buy from. Celsius is very easy to gain interest on the cryptocurrency that you keep on their uh, wallet. So uh, I like both of those, use them pretty frequently. And Celsius, uh, so far as you know, I've put in almost 30% now of my entire portfolio. Uh, going across, you can look up everything from Gemini, Gemini Pro, Binance Uphold, Uniswap, Kraken, Cash App, eToro, don't recommend that, and Crypto.com. So if you want to use the affiliate links, you don't have to. You can go right to Gemini or right to, to whatever, Uphold or uh, Coinbase, and you can go right there and sign up. Or if you use the affiliate link, it'll give you between $10 and $25. So totally up to you. And that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.